I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 4.15. Let's go ahead and do a roll call. Um, Alder Heidemann? Here. Alder Decker? Here. Great. Um, Alder Ackley and Alder Feldy are excused. Alder Salazar and here. If we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Agenda item number four, introduction of committee members, staff, and guests. We don't have any guests today. We all know each other, so we'll skip that. Uh, agenda item number five, approval of minutes for the September 22nd or 27th meeting on 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Great. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Agenda item number six, resolution number 362324, a resolution establishing polling locations for the city of Sheboygan beginning in 2024. Meredith? Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to pass out um, the maps that are effective right now, okay. that, are, that were in effect in 2023, and then we can talk about the changes that we are proposing. First of all, we Okay. Don't like to move polling locations I, I unless know. it is like in the best interest of our voters because it does okay. cause confusion. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, polling locations, according to the state, it's um, highly recommended that those polling locations be in city owned buildings for many reasons, um, mostly because we can control. <laughs> fixing, plowing, opening, closing, if there's an issue, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, so what we are proposing, since Uptown Social is now open and it's a beautiful building, we would like to start using that as a polling location. So we are looking to move. So Uptown Social is about at the corner of 8th and Zimble, right in Ward 5. Mm -hmm. So we are looking to move Ward 5 and Ward 6 to Uptown Social. So that would be eliminating Fountain Park as a polling location, um, the church there. And that's actually a, a very good idea because Fountain Park has stairs or an elevator. So okay. our polling location is on the lower level and it causes everybody to use the stairs or an elevator. And the door entering and exiting the polling location is pretty small for a rotation of voters coming in and out. So that's the first proposal is to put five and six in Uptown Social. The second proposal is to move the Humane Society to EV Free. So EV Free right now has one, seven, and eight, and we would like to include more two in there. And there's several reasons. Number one, um, when the Humane Society first became open, um, they were very excited to have us as a polling location and then um, they switched management and so that kind of decreased a little bit for us and they have opened a new dog park which has affected parking as well um, and then there are concerns with we have received several calls with allergies and smells because the voters go through all of the guinea pigs and rabbits before they enter the polling location so there have been calls um, for the smells and and allergies. If somebody does, is allergic to something like a guinea pig, they would have to pass through there. Um, EV Free has recently remodeled. They have a magnificent building there and they've always been 100% accommodating for whatever we need. Um, they really like to partner with the city and feel it's their duty to give back. And so that's one thing they've worked with us for years. Um, and they have the space to accommodate that. So those are the only two changes that we are looking to make. Would it, would it be really hard to move? I'm just thinking about how far away it is from Ward 2. Yes. There's no possibility to consider using um, the, quarry. the quarry? We had the quarry. Uh -huh. um, there were some issues with the quarry. Uh, the door is not ADA accessible right now at the quarry. I think that if oh. revisions were made to the building, mm -hmm. that would be an amazing spot. <laughs> uh, it really would be because that's more in that that area. Mm -hmm. um, 
but we moved it out of there to the Humane Society because of the reasons, the heat okay. and the and um, the coldness in there as well okay. are issues. Mm -hmm. um, but we used to have that as a polling location, and we would consider going back there if the building were updated. Got it. But we also, I mean, we looked at this map many times. We looked at even moving eight out of EV free and putting that at Uptown Social so it would balance them out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but EV free is in Ward 8, okay. and that causes a lot of issues for voters who live in sure. the same yeah. ward as their polling location but have to go somewhere else. Um, so that was one concern we had about moving eight. And we want to move the least amount possible. Okay. We could stay in the Humane Society. That's not, I mean, it's just with those issues, it's a concern. Yeah. But that's. Do you think it's too hard to move six to the Mead? Instead of Uptown Social? No. Yeah. I, yes, the Mead Library cannot hold three wards. Oh, I just can't. No. And Uptown Social, actually, if there's more that we could put in Uptown Social with their gym being done and their space, we could put more wards there. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure it's worth moving okay. anybody else. Okay. okay. I just was thinking. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, if mm -hmm. I'm willing for suggestions because we <laughs> stare at this map a lot trying to figure <laughs> out what the best what's best yeah. for voters and yeah. what voters are going to say and what their needs are. Yeah, I, I, I can see where some people may not be thrilled with, you know, uh, you know I guess we, we, we try the two in, in there and see what's going to happen. So we do. It, try the two where? In the, you know, we're going there. I know it's, I know it's not quite as convenient as they would like, but you know, again, if they, I, I can see where they, where the complaints can be with people with allergies and things like that, might be not be happy with the. Yeah, society. I'm like severely allergic to cats, so. Yeah. Right. I mean, society would not be a place I'd like to go to. Yeah. I mean, we and we don't want to be in to anybody going. So. You know. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. Looking for any other additional discussion or questions? Great. Looking for a motion? Move to approve. Second. Great. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item number seven, general ordinance number 22-23-24, an ordinance amending section 2-115 as to eliminate the need for all person signatures on council documents and revising the deadline for submitting requests for documents to the legal department. Is kind of tag team this one. I <laughs> think here. Um, some of this is updating current practices. Um, most of our ordinances and resolutions, almost all of them, go through the legal department to begin with. And it, the section had talked about them going directly to me. And so it updates that portion of it. The new way the documents look since we changed them, um, there wasn't spots for signatures. So we weren't quite sure that that was necessary to have the um, resolutions and ordinances signed. The RCs are still signed, so the report out of the committee, um, all the elders will sign whatever the um, report was by the committee still. Um, anything else that I'm missing? Uh, no, I, I, I would add though that the additional language to sub A setting a time limit for um, submitting items to the clerk is really important to have that codified. Uh, it's a pretty regular occurrence for people to seek exceptions to deadlines unless that's part of the ordinance. So we appreciate that. Um, and then uh, I also am very supportive of the language added to section B that just um, reiterates the importance of legal review for resolutions and ordinances. In section B, you're saying? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
we always want you guys to look at it. We don't want to. <laughs> yeah, and there are very few things that we look at that we don't change. <laughs> Any other questions? I guess, so, uh, by eliminating the signatures by the alderman, um, I don't understand why you, why we wouldn't be doing that anyway. It, I mean, I've done it for years. I think it's one of those things where you sign yourself, you sign your name to a document that you have approved, that's been through committee. I think it's the responsibility of the alderman to sign that document. And not having a signature, where else would you ever get uh, somebody say, well, did you sign that? Nowhere else in the process. Yeah. So we can just shove it right straight through and nobody has to sign it, nobody has to read it, nobody has to do anything. They have to vote on it, though. And right. So that's yeah, what well, I would say to constituents who are concerned. They would say, well, did you support this? And you could say, yes, I voted for it, or no, I didn't, or I abstained from voting for whatever reason. The, the framework that we're operating within for our new ordinance format is set by the software that we're using. And we've tried making changes to accommodate local practice and the software is not able to really accommodate many of our requests. So the software does not have a field for aldermen to sign anymore. Our old ordinances were written up internally so we could add that section. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Liz, but I believe that even if we sign the document, right? So even if we sign it as a committee based on licensing and hearing, even when we got to the council, you could still vote against it, which has happened before, right? We've all still signed things that were on those documents, and then we've been able to still vote yes, yay, right. or nay to them. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my name to a document that I wasn't going to vote for. Yeah. Why would I do that? Wait, wait, wait. You mean but some could? You mean? Oh, oh yeah. Well, you can change. You, know, you have the ability to change your mind. Uh, the other day, um, had a situation where, again, uh, I hadn't attended. A public works meeting and it was the, it was the buying of these 717 trees uh -huh. okay obviously i agree with that i wasn't there but i actually felt uncomfortable signing a document that i didn't have anything to do with uh -huh. and again i think that's a responsibility of an alderman they should be doing that they should be held responsible they should know what they're signing they should be reading their documents and why they can't why it, it's so hard to get somebody to sign something before the meeting i don't i don't I don't get it. I just don't, I'm not comfortable with it sure. myself. So I guess we, one accommodation that could be made is a cover sheet could become part of the standard ordinance process or resolutions. And then the cover sheet is internally developed to be signed by council members, but I'm not meaning no disrespect to your position. I'm not sure that it's legally necessary to have those signatures, it, it, it doesn't seem that it's legally necessary, it's just a personal preference. So if, if a majority of the council wanted to continue with signatures, we could do a cover sheet mm -hmm. that's just a signature page, um, and that would bypass the software limits. Dean, go ahead. So, um, so what's like the practices around the state? Like other That's counties? the exact question I was gonna ask. You know, what's practice in like Bond Black Racine you know, lacrosse, where you know, ever are. But is there? I don't have an sense, answer. I don't know. Any kind of a sense on how that, you know, because if the software is that way, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of other um, municipalities are using this software. I mean, so what are they doing? Are they, have they kind of eliminated this as part of this? Also, is that why it's not even in the software? Because these municipalities aren't even doing it, haven't been doing it in the first place? Is this something that's just a Sheboygan thing that, you know, and that's why we're doing it. We've just done it because that's how we've always done it. <laughs> that sometimes is the practice in Sheboygan. Sometimes is we 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 do it because that's how we've always done it. <laughs> I like that statement. Well, and I will say that um, the why we changed our ordinances mm -hmm. sure. to begin with to look like and our resolutions to look like this and mm -hmm. not the other way sure. is because the software made general ordinances look a certain way. And we didn't want one ordinance to look one way that was in our muni code. Sure. And then another one that we created in our Word document to look another way. So yes, the software will not allow, I don't believe for the signatures, but 
the ones that we create in Word, like the resolutions, sure. we could add back in lines for the alders to sign those. We would just have to think of an accommodation for the ones that are made through the Muni code, if that makes sense. Because these are still an in-house document, these resolutions. Yeah. These are still sure. done in Word, and we could yeah. add a line if that was what was preferred to have it signed. Did you, when we were researching document format, did you ask other cities what they were doing for signatures? I feel like we looked at that, but I can't remember. I think every municipality does things very different. Everything looks very different depending on where you go. Some are signed, some are not, some are don't have RCs, some are just resolutions that are read twice and there's not a report of the committee. You know what I mean? It's just, we could get some information, but every municipality I feel like we looked at. Yeah, even of those different. that use the same software, because there yes. are different options yes. you can select when you're printing. It only prints as a PDF, so you can't modify it after <sighs> that. That sucks. And then there are different options you can select for how it's how it, it formats. Yeah. But none of the options had the signature line. It was more for things like, do you want red lines? Do you want mm -hmm. the original ordinance without edits preceding the ordinance as edited? Do you, you know, want it in color, black and white? Do you want an effective date provision, a bunch of whereas clauses, things like that? So to get some clarification on it, for Joe's question of saying, um, is there a way by doing this? Is this going to eliminate um, opportunities for alders to not see things or read them? I mean, no, right? The, the thing is, is it would just place it in front of you. Majority of us do the reading ahead of time, or should be. And then you would still be seeing the documents as is uh, connected on the Muni code, correct? I'm just and making actually, sure that every. Tell, I mean, for the last several meetings, yeah. they've not had signatures. You've only signed the RCs. Okay. This is practice then when we switch that was that it's just updating this ordinance now we would go back to a different practice. But for the last several meetings. So we've already been doing it. Okay. I mean, because, you know, to, 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 to your point, I mean, there have been some of them that have been like this thick. <laughs> you know, we're not reading those at the meeting. <laughs> we're not we're not looking at those when we're reading. You know, we're not we're not. I'm not you know, I'm basically okay. That's okay. That's what that is, and well, we sign it. You know, that's so. I mean, yeah, I think of that park plan. That was very big. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> that was very big. There was another one that was. Uh, I think what was it? I'm trying to think. There was another one that was really thick a couple months ago that was like. Well, you have a recodification, and that was yeah, and yeah. It has like ten clips on it. Sure. Yeah, we maxed out our printing budget, I think, because of the recodification <laughs> project. Maxed your printing budget. <laughs> if you guys even have one of those, it's silly to me. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions or discussion that we want to talk about? Uh, yeah. Do you have something? No, go ahead. Yeah. Well, again, um, the other portions of this ordinance, I'm fine with. It's the removing of the signatures of the alderman that I'm not fine with. So I would not be supporting this only because I believe it's a responsibility for people to know what they're doing and be accountable. Okay, so if somebody wanted to go back, you always look at the voting record, that, that's fine. But if they voted for it in committee and they didn't vote it then, but they did, they signed it, that they signed the document while they were in while they were in chambers can i ask what you believe a signature will do then like if i even signed it and I it's still telling vote, if i vote everybody that it, i read it, this it doesn't i i agree with this i put my name on something wouldn't my vote do that it, it amanda you're not going to change my mind on this i'm not trying to change your okay. mind I'm all i'm to saying is that, that has been done for years and years and years with, and where is the where is the where is the problem around. with having to sign a signature before a council meeting on a document that you voted on in, in committee. I don't think there's a problem. We're saying we're creating a new standard that fits what, what we want to, what is being put forward through the software. And so whether- So the whether software without, is more important than, than showing your constituents and, and following a procedure that's been in, been in Sheboygan for a million years. Well, and, and I don't see where the, 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 
that it's so important not to have the signature. I don't think it takes any more time up, but again- It does, they'd have to make a cover letter. It adds time to now that it's not printed on a software. So you're like, ooh, but like you, if you wanna talk about where we wanna put work and labor towards, it's the software is a tool to now do better. So prior to that, you had hundreds of people working to like create documents and type them out and make right. edits and redo it on a typing machine. Now it, it, we're like in the 21st century and we have softwares that help us streamline these. And so yeah. I, yeah. I believe that like what you're saying, like if you're saying, <laughs> I believe a signature does this, it actually doesn't. A signature is just the document saying you were there. Your vote is what counts. You're either pushing it through or you're not. A signature doesn't do anything. I'm not, I'm just not a contract. I, but I right? just interrupt is it a contract? One sure. second is that the RCs still have the signature line. Everything that comes out of committee if you vote on the resolution today that to change the polling locations, you will have to sign the RC. That's not changing. Mm -hmm. It is the it is the change. It was just on the ordinances and the resolutions. Those are the only two that it would be removing. Um, and I will say there are some instances, and it doesn't happen as much anymore. But there are two names on that on um, resolutions and ordinances usually, and there are meetings where those two people are not there to sign it, and then that becomes an issue for us. But the RCs will stay um, that you would still sign what you discussed in committee. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I always thought of it just as it was a, it was a formality. It would be, even, even if I didn't support something, I'm a member of that committee, I signed it. Even if I didn't support it, I, my vote was my vote. My signature didn't, my vote was just, my signature was just there because I'm a member of that committee and I signed it. That's yeah. how I always looked at the signature. The signature I always looked at as a, as a formality. The vote is where my constituents look at. That's how they yeah. look at it. I agree with that statement. So, That's what I was but, trying to get to. Yeah, it's kind of a formula. Okay. Okay, so I will make a motion to approve. Are you going to second that? No. Can I second it? I will second it. Okay. okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, I can't say that. Any opposed? Opposed. Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Great. I uh, knew you were going to have the votes anyway. <laughs> I know. You just, you just want to debate with me. I knew. I know. That's why I came early. I live for that. I came that, that early. I'm glad you did. Did you have a cup of coffee? I would have brought one. I brought soda. <laughs> okay, agenda item number eight. Uh, ordinance. An ordinance, oh wait, agenda, no, general ordinance number 23-23-24, ordinance amending section 26-20 sub C, as to update the list of public buildings where smoking is prohibited. I will speak to this. Um, this ordinance amendment updates names and locations of city buildings uh, so that the signage in and around those buildings can be accurately reflecting back to the ordinance prohibiting smoking. Smoking in the building or on, around the on the premise, in and around. Cool. Michael, okay. did the fine change at all? No, we haven't changed the, that, the okay. bond amount for this, uh, but we are working through a, a massive bond schedule update based following the recodification. So, if there are forfeitures that you're looking to modify, now would be a good time to bring those to our office. You also, I see you also had to clean up because the public works 833 that's, was still listed as. Yeah, <laughs> Oops. And how, how many years ago was that? <laughs> Do are any of the other parks buildings in here? I, I see the D Land Park Community Center, but not like Kiwanis or our. Any of the ones you own, Roosevelt? Uh, those would be subject to park rules. There's a different ordinance. Okay, got it. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay. All right, great. Uh, any discussion? Yeah. Are uh, city employees allowed to uh, smoke in their vehicles? In city vehicles? Yes. No. Well, since it's There's... a number 14. Well, that was a unified no. That's pretty. No, it's on here. That's why. Yeah. Is it? Okay. I, yeah. I, I've lost my other part of it. So. Okay. So section C sub 14 prohibits smoking within city owned or leased motor vehicles. And then sub 13 is our catch all for city owned or rented office spaces. Okay. So if I'm sitting in the parking lot. 
uh, DPW. I can smoke in my car there. Your personal vehicle. Your personal vehicle. But okay. not your work vehicle. Okay. If you're 20, if you're parked 25 feet away from the main entrance. I don't smoke, so I, I'm never, you're, never you're never gonna, gonna get it today. Yeah, that, 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 it'd take a lot more than that. He's walking around counting one, two, two three, four. <laughs> no, sometimes it's just an idea. You know, if you see somebody, what you say is, hey, are they supposed to be doing that? Are they not supposed to do that? Yeah. You know, there's always people that are willing to bend the rules any way they possibly can, and and, and smoking is an addiction. Right. And yeah. uh, and again, you know, I feel you know, and I worked in the tobacco business for 25 years. Really? Sure, but I didn't smoke, so so it's one of those things where I feel sorry for those people. I, do I want them smoking in our city vehicles? No. Do I want them smoking in this? No. Yeah. No, smoking this in in city vehicles devalues them Vehicle. and yes. also and creates least. health yes. hazards for other people yeah. using yeah. vehicles. Second hand smoke. All right, any other discussion? Okay, looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Great. Um, any other discussion? Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Agenda item number nine. RO number 5423-24 by City Clerk submitting a, submitting a license application. Just one. Um, it, it looks like it's for... Um, Sheboygan Ace Axe or the Axe Bar, Bar to include the first floor. And it, there's no um, objection to it except that they we are working with them to kind of tweak their description. But it, okay. Chuck says that it does not need to be granted contingent on that. We will just get the premise description. Yeah, accurate. and so the first floor is where they have um, escape rooms. Oh. So if you want to do the escape room, you have to, I actually did this for a friend's birthday. You have to have the cocktail upstairs and then leave the cocktail and then go into the escape room. So like while you're waiting for the next group to go in, you can't actually drink down there because they don't have, it's not on their premise license. So okay. I think this is a win for them yeah. and for yeah. constituents going are going to yeah. enjoy it. Sure. Yeah. It'd yeah. be, be kind of odd not to be able to have your drink where you're in that escape room. Yeah. And we I've didn't done that. Yeah. Well, not even going in the room, but like just having it as you're waiting. We had to, like, we mm. got there thinking we had enough time to hang out, and then they were like, you can only hang out up here. You can't hang it down, up mm. downstairs, there, so. you know, and it, like, gives you, like, a preview of, like, what you're to expect, and yeah. so um, I think this is a great enough addition. Sure. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Sure. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Take care votes aye. Motion carries. All right, next meeting date will be October 25th of 2023. Looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Great. Uh, any opposed? Meeting adjourned. 4.53. Four, four,